podcast. We got a special guest in the house, Michael, Michael Blackson. Blackson, baby. What's up, motherfucker? <laughs> you got to kiss my Down ass. Down the <laughs> Fuck you. 200 times to screw with the fuck you again, my nigga. <laughs> <laughs> Let's is, get to this, the show, baby. This. Hey guys, welcome We're to back. the Pressure Podcast, man. You guys missed a little bit here, so we'll just pick up where we left off. You were in the middle of roasting. That's pressure, right, which is motherfucker. <laughs> This nigga look like the nigga from the movie Get Out if he never got out. <laughs> <laughs> and then this nigga look like the 3,000 pick in the NBA draft in 2010 that never made it. He like, <laughs> the nigga that tore all his ligaments, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> and the 3,000 pick from DeVry University, this nigga. <laughs> DeVry University, that's the worst. I will say this, though. <laughs> Mike came in and we're like, hey, man, uh, we have no shoes rule. And he was like, real shaky about it. Like, oh, uh, uh, uh. And then he took his shoes off. And I was like, damn, those things are ashy, bro. I can see why, man. Yo, Never we're brothers. Your feet are for real. We're both ashy feet. Yeah. <laughs> Our feet are related, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Hey, guys, uh, welcome to the Fresh Trade Podcast, man. Uh, yep. Quick announcements, guys. Patreon.com slash Fresh Trade, where you guys can find all the behind the scenes content, us kicking out annoying girls, Zoom calls. We're going to have our first Zoom call for the month on Sunday, Sunday. 8 p.m. Uh, also, we have uh, content on there where we answer questions. Uh, you know, at the 97 tier. And uh, yeah, check Anything. us out over there. Patreon.com. Dating, guys. whatever you want to know. Everything we help you guys out with. Also, guys, check us out on uh, Spotify. Spotify, Google, and Apple Podcasts. Every single platform you listen to podcasts, we are there. Just make sure you wear headphones, though, because we're the most hated, and you can definitely get in trouble for that and lose your job or canceled. And then also get the gear, FresherPodcastStore.com. Right now, we're low on merch, guys. I ain't going to lie. But thank you so much for supporting and buying the merch. Uh, we should get restocked here very soon. Thanks, guys. And then uh, also, Fresh got a vlog channel. Yeah, so guys, for behind the scenes of my life, Chris, Trey, and Myron, check it out. I'm going to put up a vlog today as well with Michael Blackson in it. Shout out to him and his wife, uh, well, soon to be wife, Arada. And yeah, check it out, guys. And then uh, also, guys, uh, check us out on Twitch. We're live streaming on Twitch right now as well. Twitch.tv slash FreshFit Podcast. Check us out. Yep. Uh, it's actually in better quality Way better quality. over there, guys. So check us out over there. Oh, yeah, well. you guys on MySpace too, motherfucker? <laughs> <laughs> We're everywhere. You're everywhere. <laughs> in MySpace too, man. Shout out to who, who's the owner of MySpace again? No, no, um, no, Mike. I am in your space um. right now. <laughs> <laughs> what? Thankfully, we got a comedian in the house. A real comedian. Uh, <laughs> and then, uh, Chris, you want to tell about your Twitch channel, your struggling Twitch channel that you haven't posted anything on? Hey guys, follow me on Twitch. I'm going live this week, so let's get it. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> All right. Okay. And then, uh, and then we got uh, for guys for any video reactions. Yeah, uh, Trey. Trey, uh, Trey, uh, Trey Talk Sports on Instagram. He ain't gonna respond to you, but yeah, he's there. And yep. then uh, anything else? You know the good thing about you guys. You guys sound so educated. I went on another part with the Noriega shit. Sound like everybody there just dropped out of eighth grade. <laughs> <laughs> y'all niggas sound like y'all all went to college and yeah. your parents loved you guys. <laughs> I'm proud of you, man. I'm very happy to be here. I feel real educated. I feel like a dumbass right now. <laughs> that sounds when, whenever a nigga talk white, they be like he sounds educated. Well, I, yeah. I sound like a nigga. <laughs> <laughs> nigga, <laughs> nigga. Yo, and then guys, show. follow us oh, on man. Instagram, Freshman Podcast. Let's get into the interview, man. Uh, man, so if you don't know, man, we got Michael Blackson in the house. Michael, <laughs> tell them who you are. They don't know who Down you are Marco, already. Marco, I mean, this is pretty Marco. obvious, but like, tell them who Michael Blackson is, man. If you don't know who I am, that means you haven't paid your cable bill in about 25 years. <laughs> you gotta get your life together. Uh, comedian Michael Blackson been telling jokes for over 25 years. Uh, originally from West Africa. You know, uh, Ghana is my blood. Liberia is who fed me. And I actually got my discipline from Nigeria. So I really represent all of West Africa. Mm -hmm. You know, my passport said ECOWAS. That's like... Uh, Eco wise, East, um, what the fuck, economy of whatever, it has to do West Africa, motherfucker. <laughs> I represent all of West Africa, so you know, um, and shout out to my continent, um, for you know, bring me to the, the great thing about you know, coming from abroad and coming to America, mm. that's the hardest thing. Coming here to break through is the hardest thing for any foreigner, yeah. you know. But when I came to the States, 
that was not my intention. I didn't come here to be a star. I just came here as a kid. I was about 13 years old. You know, came with my mother. My mother, who's an evangelist. It's like, for some reason, every children, that their parents, is pastor, always always the bad ones. We're always the one with the rude mouth. And the, I mean, my mouth, I don't know where this comedy shit came from. You know, and I, I sit back and I think back to when I was a kid. Because, you know, even if you play football, you play as a little kid. Yeah. You know, and with comedy... I was trying to think, like, where the hell this shit came from? And I sat there one time, and I thought about me being six years old. I remember taking a tape recorder, six years old, and just cussing on it. Mind you, my mother is like a woman of God and goes <laughs> travel the world, preach the gospel. And I thought about that. I'm like, that's where this comedy shit came from. When I was six years old, I remember doing this. Wow. Just taking a tape and just cussing shit, shit, fuck, shit, shit. <laughs> I remember that six years old. What? Did she ever hear it? <laughs> fuck no. No. <laughs> She's, I hope she's not watching the show. <laughs> I want you to have as many views as possible. Mom, please don't watch. She's in Ghana right now. She's not even paying no mind. She's like in her late thousands. Okay, good. Growing up, did you learn English or did you like learn it when you came over? Oh, no, no. We spoke English. Um, you know, Liber I, most of my African life was in Liberia. Okay. Liberia has like a broken English. You know, like whatever you say, like to speak like more English, just almost add an O to everything you say. Like, how you doing? Oh, I'm hungry. Oh, <laughs> I'm hungry. Uh, so like, I'm like fresh and fit. Oh, <laughs> you're singing all the time. <laughs> this man got drafted in the NBA draft. Oh, <laughs> you know, everything just added O. So Liberia is a broken. <laughs> Liberia is like, I don't know. You know, you guys know the history of Liberia. Give uh, us, give us a crash course. Well, man. when, when, when the Sudan, slaves, so that's a whole when other. the slaves were allowed, when the slaves were free, mm -hmm. they were allowed to go back. Most of them went back to Liberia. Mm. You know, that's like where most of the slaves went back to settle when they were let, when they were allowed to go back home. Okay, you know, so Liberia, um, they have the, they have, they have. I mean, a lot of countries in Africa all have their own tribes and language and everything. But it's a particular people in Liberia called the Konka people. Konka people are those who didn't really have a tribe because they were the ones that came from from like um, America when the slaves were allowed to become free. So those don't, those ones don't have a tribe. They just pretty much spoke the broken English. Okay. Gotcha, I got gotcha, you. Gotcha, man. Super chats real quick. Uh, yeah. So, okay. So, uh, guys, thank you so much uh, for super chatting. So, Chris, what do you want to do here? Uh, yeah, let's read them. So, I got, okay, so I'll read a couple of them here, guys, because we got a special guest in the house. So we'll try to limit the super chat reading here on, then, on this uh, one. After that's all, uh, twenty bucks and up. Yeah. So uh, Ricky Webster, five bucks. Just showing love. Props, dude. Thank you so much, Thank Ricky you, Webster. Uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Orange. Fake dot dot nigga. Fuck that, oh, fuck that nigga. nigga. Okay. <laughs> uh, Jeffrey, this is about to be a great show, mother suckers. Uh, stating, uh, staring Africa's number one, Mr. Black Sun and feet and fit. Okay, thank <laughs> you so much. And then uh, five bucks from Salah Aminu all the way from. Oh, that's four, no, that's four pounds, nigga. That's more than five dollars. <laughs> four pounds is about six fifty. There, there you go. Six hundred dollars, motherfucker. More thank you, motherfucker. We are rich. <laughs> <laughs> Black Wolf Inc. Five bucks. What's good, fellas? Fresh. Take a good look at Michael. Look at him. Look at him. He is the captain now. Myron is always over 9,000. <laughs> He's the bro. captain now. <laughs> <laughs> and then Michael Meestroke. Likes are free. Five bucks. Thank you so much. Thank you, brother. Joey Badass. Five bucks. Chris uh, is the hidden gem of the show from his snarky remarks to behind the scenes work. Thank you so yes, much. Facts. Thanks, and then Hawkman, uh, no wonder y'all were late. Y'all needed a son to light fresh and Michael in the same room. Uh, <laughs> uh, Hawkman. I want to see this fucking picture. <laughs> exactly. Uh, Venom 2333, this is going to be easily be the funniest episode ever. Sup, Matasakas. And then we got Tory Lanez. I thought Fresh and Michael were going to be here. <laughs> <laughs> You're funny, Tory. And then uh, Isaac Perez, uh, keep up with the good content. I've uh, been watching y'all playlist videos. A uh, bunch of gems. Let the beach ah uh, nigga keep beach ass niggas keep hating. Thank you so much. And then rewind, Michael. That Joe uh, Jolliffe of originally came from Senegal, and that's uh, Ibrahim uh, Cisse. Five bucks. Canadian. I gotta try uh, Senegal Jalof. I'm hearing a lot about it. I gotta give it. A, you know, you know what the Jalof is? Now what's that? It's like a competition of who could make the best African version of fried rice. You know, Nigeria. Right now, the big con contest between Nigeria and Ghana. Ghana Jollof, Niger Jollof. They all have their own flavor of way of making their own. F it's like a fried rice. It's like, you know. Chicken so, they, they say Senegal. I never tried Senegalese fried Jollof. I've had Nigerian mm -hmm. Jollof. Nigerian Jollof is trash. Uh, <laughs> but no, I did have a good one from like an older Nigerian woman. If they're six years old and older, they make <laughs> their good. good jollof, you know. Mm -hmm. But Ghana jollof, I think, is number one. Liberia also has a jollof. Liberia jollof is pretty good. But I think right now, to me, it's between Liberia and Ghana. Till I oh, taste. Of course. Till I taste Senegal jollof and Gambia. Every fucking country has a jollof, motherfuckers. Damn. <laughs> Too many races. And then, uh, welcome, Black, uh, Blackson, number one podcast in the world. Absolutely. Facts, uh, Kade. 
Uh, Big Mo uh, 89. Oh, Fresh's father is in the build oh, Don <laughs> building Don DeMarco. Big ups, Mr. Blackson. Uh, five <laughs> bucks. Daquan Wiltshire is going to have to come gun blazing on the next ep appearance. Top five anime episodes because this episode is officially the funniest one-on-one uh, -on -one we've had. There you go. Because uh, his. Okay. And then we got five bucks from Theo Smiles. Yo, you mother sucker. Shout out to Ghana. To Ghana. And then last one here. Uh, vibe, vibe with Trey Trey Reacts. Fresh and fit turning up. Much love, Mike Black. I think from here on, you actually talk to the niggas that sent $10 or more. Guys. Yeah, we should. Well, it's going to be, well, Chris, you said 20 and up, right? Yeah, 20 and up. Yeah, all yeah, them, yeah, them yeah. crackheads, don't, <laughs> don't crackhead prices today. Y'all tell uh, them niggas when I'm not here. He $20 said, and we'll talk to you, motherfucker. He says, Mike Black, you top five of all time comedians. You and Fresh Long Lost Brothers, mother sucker. All right, man. You said we're all right, we're cool. brothers. And, and guys, thank you so much for coming into the Bro, chat. Guys. Yo, guys, please like, like the, video. the video, subscribe to the channel. We're going to give you guys some heat. So, okay, so Mike, yeah. I got to know, brother. What inspired you to get into comedy? Because you're not actually just funny, bro. You just, Looking at you, I just want to laugh. But what inspired you to get into comedy? So fuck you comedy? too, motherfucker. <laughs> you know what? We play high go seek. It's going to overtime. You almost got this week, motherfucker. We have play duck, duck, Turn bitch. the lights off. And we'll both be missing, motherfucker. <laughs> be our chains and our watch and this nigga's face, motherfucker. <laughs> um, well, I definitely won't see you too, but... <laughs> but you know what? It's what I went through as a kid. You know, when I came to America, um, you know, the goal for any foreigner to come to America is just... The American dream, you know. Yeah. We didn't. I didn't be a star. I, I was happy at the job at McDonald's, you know. Um, but I'm not coming. I came as 13 years old. Kids just American kids are very mean. Yeah, <laughs> a lot of things I didn't know about myself <laughs> till I came to America. Mm -hmm. I didn't know I was dark skin till I got here. <laughs> For real, like we never, we never looked at complexion, you know, when I was a kid back home. We never saw it. I got here and the kids like, oh, you black? I'm like, of course, we're all black. They said, no, nigga, you black as fuck. <laughs> Darkness. Like, how black is that? Then, then I found out I'm black as under the bed. They said the difference between me and midnight is 11:59. And God said, let there be light. I was out of town. I look like I have no bright ideas. Every time I take a shit, I think my dick fell off. Yeah. So my dick look like shit. And they're telling you this as a kid. In the, when you oh, first as a kid, got Americans are very mean. Wow. You know. And then back home at that time, you know, we was this never, in Philly, right? This is in Philly. What well, Philly was my next stop. My first okay. stop was Newark, New Jersey. Newark, oh. was, Newark was so bad when I got to Philly. Philly felt like heaven. You know, that's how bad Newark, New Jersey was. Damn. You know, Newark was rough. By the time I got to Philly, I was, it was been two, three years almost. So now I kind of like knew what it took to fit in, and what it took to you know to like hang with these niggas mm -hmm. you know and um but even before i got to philly like i said you know back from africa you know we just we fashion is good in africa we care about new clothes we never care about the name brand when i was a kid now people are into brand i'm talking about like this late 80s we didn't care back in liberia at 13 years old you have new clothes you get the girls so I'm going to come into America, going my first year of school. Over there? I didn't even Don't know be you guys had clothes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Look like Scotty Pippen with a concussion. Fuck you, nigga. <laughs> <laughs> like Scotty Pippen with, with the fucked up contract. Man. <laughs> <laughs> Michael Jordan didn't help you out for a reason. Fuck um, you. Y'all playing the same team that you was living in a shelter, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Now I forgot what I was talking about. I was talking about fuck this nigga. So you were talking school, about passion. New clothes. New clothes. So I, come, I, I came to America. My mother, at this time, my mother worked at McDonald's, made $50 a week. That's how we, and we lived in our friends. Um, my mother had a friend in Jersey. We lived in her basement. And back then, I mean, basement, now people have fixed their basement. Up. It was before people started fixing their basement. Back then, basement was the basement where Damn. if you down there, somebody flush your toilet, you're going to smell that shit. <laughs> Damn. I mean, we, that's where we slept. And every time these motherfuckers flush your toilet, I'm like, what the fuck these niggas are eating upstairs? Because the shit stunk. <laughs> but my mom, she made 50 bucks a week, and she could only afford to buy me clothes from, like, McCrory's and Woolworth, which is kind of similar to, like, Walmart now. Woolworth, yeah. I remember that. But Woolworth. That's right. in Barbados, too. Oh, you have that? Yeah. Oh, dope, man. So, yeah, so my first day of school, my, my, my mother bought me church shirt, like a button-up shirt, some church pants, because my mom was all about church. Uh-oh. And then I said, Mom, I need sneakers. I'm going to school. And then she bought me these sneakers called an action. She got this shit at Pathmark. Pathmark is a grocery store. Back and in the day in New York City? Back in the day in New York. Newark, so, yeah. It's like you buy chicken and you buy sneakers all in the same <laughs> aisle. It's like, you know. So now I got a fl chicken flavor sneakers. <laughs> And I'm, but I don't give a fuck. It's all brand new. I'm fresh. I'm going to school. I'm, I'm out of shit on these niggas. I got brand new clothes. Yeah. I had no idea that shit had to be name brand. I just thought <laughs> as long as it's new, 
I go to, I'm like, you know, yeah, motherfucker, I'm like, yo, these bitches, I'm gonna get my first kiss this year. I'm excited. Niggas, everybody start laughing at me. Like, what? He's like, what you doing? I said, what you mean what I'm doing? They said, what you wearing? I said, this is brand new. They said, nigga, it's not Adidas. It's not Nike. I said, motherfucker, it's brand new. Nobody never wore this shit. <laughs> it lit my ass up, man. <laughs> Yo. And I didn't get into fashion till later. Two years later, I remember getting a job selling candies door to door. This um this guy used to come and take us to like um rich white neighborhoods, and we just lied to these white folks. <laughs> hey, I'm with the youth corp, staying out of trouble. I'm selling these candy this candy he he probably paid maybe 50 cents for these candy we sold this shit for like 375 mm. and we got 75 cents out of every one we sold ah. so i would make about 50 bucks a week and i was saving my money up and then the following school year i went and bought me some name brand stuff to school and then i started fitting little by little and then um, my mother had some friends in philly that told her he said philly's much cheaper you know you get your own place here so we got to philly had a first apartment that was three hundred fifty dollars, three bedroom for three hundred fifty dollars a month. And what? I oh, damn. Yes, yeah. This is like. <coughs> or you in the eighty nine? It's eighty nine. Oh, eighty. Okay. Oh, in the hood. I'm in the hood. Fifty fifth okay. and Chester Avenue. Like, is yeah. this North Philly? This is Southwest Philly. Oh, sure. Oh. You know, it's near a street called King Sesson. Man, no kings live on that motherfucker. <laughs> Bunch of niggas ready to kill the king. <laughs> but yeah, so I grew up there, and then I had my own my first room, my own room for the first time. And uh, by then, then I had a job at Domino's Pizza. So you know. Selling pieces. I was. I started off just answering the phone, learn how to deliver. I started delivering pieces on a bike. I didn't have a license at the time. Mm -hmm. I didn't have a car license, so I delivered pieces on a bike, and making tips every night, twenty, thirty dollars at night. Saved my money. Started buying clothes. So when I, by the time I got to Philly, it was like eleventh grade, mm -hmm. and then I was like looking real fresh. You know, kids was like, "God damn, who's this dude?" Mind you, I'm brand new. I already knew what it took to fit in, and at that point in life, it was like. Um, how old are you at this point now? Um, 15. <coughs> 15, okay. 15 going on 16. It was summer. I knew I, t I was going to turn 16 in November. I'm born in November. Mm -hmm. okay. So it's just like September. Mm -hmm. So I'm in the 10th, 11th grade. I'm in 11th grade, and I remember going to school fresh. And back then, it wasn't that many foreigners in America. It was mostly Jamaicans. So everybody <laughs> that was dark skin with an accent, they thought you was Jamaican. Jamaican, straight up. And top, not only dark skin with an accent, you Jamaican, and what did Jamaicans do? What do they all do for a living? Oh, they sell drugs? Sell drugs. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Jama Weed right. man. Weed man. So Bless up. I went to school boop, with an boop. accent. Niggas thought I was drug dealer, Jamaican drug dealer. I say, you know what? I'm going to let niggas think I am. They wouldn't want to fuck with me. Because right. nobody want to fuck with the drug dealer. Yeah. You know, so I didn't say much. I just kept real cool, quiet. And people just thought I was, just, I was a drug dealer. So they didn't bother me much. And then that's when I started making fun of people. You know, there's like 11 grade. I started, okay, now what you wearing now, motherfucker? I'm talking clowning niggas one by one. That's when the comedy started to come in, mm. you know. And then I remember when I graduated high school, I was still at Domino's. I learned by that time I'm like managing Domino's Pizza. And I remember I hired this one, one particular guy. He was, uh, he did part time at Domino's and he was a full time acting teacher at the Philadelphia Community College. And he just thought I was funny. He said, Mike, you funny. Let me you know, let me help you get like five minutes together, go to open mic. And he helped me put my first five minutes together, and I started going to open mic every week. Wow. So even being in that situation at Domino's, you met somebody that could change your life. Yeah. yeah that's that, crazy. That, that pressured me to go on that stage. So, yeah, man. That's so that's where comedy started. And then, you know, one thing that back then, though, this, we're talking about early 90s now. That's like 94. It was all about competition. It was, everything was a competition. And that's even when I did Comic View in like 94, 95, it was a competition. You know, and I remember the first one, I, I took an L. I, I had like, but everybody that beat me, them niggas ain't doing shit right now. <laughs> it's know? funny, like when you first start anything new or anything that's like a, a different career, like you're going to fail at the very beginning. And, but once you keep going and you oh, keep yeah. pushing in the effort, it's going to make sense. But it's funny. Imagine a young Michael Blackson saying, ha ha, you black nigga. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, motherfucker, what you wearing? Punk bitch. What sneakers is that? <laughs> were you still working at Domino's when you were doing these comedy routines? Oh yeah, I worked at Domino's for, uh, I worked there for a while, and, and one time I went to New York. At this time, I was the manager of Domino's. I'm probably like 22, 23 years old. Mm. And I remember <laughs> going to um, New York to do this show, and my assistant manager didn't show up. And then this just happened to be a day that the, the owners of Domino's decided to pop up to the store. Oh. Nobody there run the store. And it, was not one, it wasn't a corporate store. It was a franchise. So they make their own decisions. 
fuck, they fucking fired me right on the spot because I was in there to run the store and my assistant manager wasn't there. So I lost my job. And then I had to like, at this point, I was making every bit of like comedy, not much. I was probably making $50 a show here and there. McDonald's was paying me at that time like 25000 a year. I was balling. Mm-hmm. I had a brand new Hyundai Excel with 16 inch American <laughs> racer rims. Motherfucker, y'all know shit about that. You just got to America, you punk bitch. And this is 1990, right? <laughs> no, no, this is like 95 ish. This is like 95? Yeah, 95. Okay. And then when you left uh, Domino's, did you go? I left Domino's, the struggle. That's when the struggle You should have really went started. to Pizza Hut, bro. I did try. I did, I did went to Hut. Pizza Hut, but it wasn't going to make you manager. I had to, they wanted me to start all over from the beginning. And then I, I did a bunch of temporary temp jobs. I worked at this one place. It was called, we, we just packed pennies. I was a penny packer. <laughs> So I knew everything. In fact, this is we did pennies and broad. That's why I was inspired to do Titty Tuesdays on on the internet. I don't know if you guys ever watch my Titty. T- I go live sometimes. Girls come on live and I look at their bra and guess what their bra size is by looking at them. Really? By mm. looking at their bra because I packed pennies and bra for like three years. So you knew? I knew I could look at a woman and tell you know her titty size. I was a titiologist. <laughs> you could tell if they're lopsided, hey, your surgeon yeah, sucks, all that. Yeah, yeah, all of that, bitch. You're a 36 triple D. Fuck, <laughs> you can breastfeed two villages with that. <laughs> <laughs> all right, I'll hit fire. the Super Chats real quick. Uh, okay, uh, Black Sun Series. Uh, big up Fresh Fit for bringing the legend Michael Blackson on the show. Uh, had me laughing from next Friday and can't wait for it. Meet the Blacks 3. Facts. That's uh, that. Um, and then, and, yo, there's 4,000 of you guys in here. Plus, guys, please. Like the video. Like the video, comment below and subscribe. T- comment, uh, you know, Michael Blackson is really black, or for the algorithm. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever or, works. Uh, um, anything else, Fresh? Uh, Chris? No, we're good. Okay. So, so obviously, so you started mm-hmm. rising up the ranks mm-hmm. with Comic View. And if I'm not mistaken, Comic View was on BET, right? Yes, yeah, BET. Yeah. yeah. That was back then. That was, the BET was where so everybody watched it. Because yeah. I remember when I first yeah. came on BET, I didn't have cable. I had no cable. I'm walking down the street. People were like, oh, we saw you on BET. I'm like, God damn, I wish I could see this shit too. We got a lot of millennials here that might not know. That's Black Entertainment Network, guys. That's a cable channel. (laughs) That's when Black BET was really owned by a black person. It was Bob Mm -hmm. Johnson, I think, was the owner back then. And then uh, later on, it became bought. I mean, we know Viacom bought it out now and whatever. But BET was like, Black Channel. That's was, what yeah, every yeah. every nigga watched. Well, BT. It was and Park shit. and all yeah. that. I remember all that of that. We all Terrence watched. Yeah, and we all Roxy. watched BT. So like now it's like you know TV will never be the same like it was back then. You no, it was know, YouTube. I remember AJ and Free, bro. Terrence and Roxy. Oh, that's yeah. not hell no. AJ and Free was a. Hey man, I'm still bro. young, OGs man. Know about that, man. How about Big Tigger in the basement? You remember that? <laughs> I remember that. Nah, I remember yeah, that. Man. What? I remember. Yeah, I remember. That's BT. Yeah, yeah. Big Tigger. It would go. It would go. Um, rap in the basement. Then we'll go 106 in Park. And then, uh, and then that would, and then what would go after 106 Park? How Probably about like that a movie? Okay. How about that Midnight? What that booty shaking shit? Oh, what was it uh, BT Uncut. Uncut. Yeah, God I remember that it. shit too. Adult Swim. Uh, Is that what that part? Yeah, of? Cartoon Network. That's Cartoon Network. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Got gotcha. you, stupid. Okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> what? Um, oh man! So you're rising through the ranks. Rising through the ranks. Do a comic view. Um, view. Who was uh, like a celebrity or someone that you met that really like inspired you or made you? Uh, uh, I mean, realize well, that shit's about to get real. Well, all right. So after I left Domino's and packed panties for a while, after packing panties, the penny company went out of business. When they went out of business, I, collect, I remember collecting unemployment for like six months. Okay. Mm-hmm. I, I mean, I, I definitely took advantage of the government at that time. It's one time <laughs> I could say, God damn, I took advantage of the fucking system. I said to myself, I'm going to take a break. I'm going to collect all, I'm going to unemployment my ass till it ends. And it ended after six months. And I went and got uh, the job that really helped me. I worked for the airlines. I went and got a job with, back then was U.S. Airways, which is now part of American Airlines. Wow. I work for U.S. Airways, so, and I've, I hope they're listening because I use the airlines. You know, I pretty much use them because when you work for the airlines, you get to fly for free. Your kids, your family, your mother, everybody get to fly for free. Oh, mm. shit. And okay. if you want to fly other airlines, you pay like 20% of whatever the fare is. So I took that job purposely because I wanted to be able to get around because at that mm. point, I wasn't really that popular. And when the promoter want to book a show, they don't want to fly me down. They'd rather go with a local. So I said to myself, you know, let me get this free flight benefit. Then mm-hmm. where I could just tell the promoter, hey, you don't got to pay for my flight. Just throw me a couple of hundred dollars or Smart. throw me an extra hundred dollars, and I'll get there my own way. And I was using the airline to, you know, to get around. So this so, is what, let, mid, still mid-90s now? Or are we talking about oh, no, no, we're not. Well, I got the job with the airline at 96, April of 96. And I, it was done at like, I worked from 96 all the way to like 9-11. Damn. Oh, wow. Okay. Yes, I was what, there for, and mind you, I was there a year after Next Friday came out. Cause Next Friday came out in um, two thousand. Okay. 
Right. So I was there for, after even doing a movie, I was there. Because the reason why I kept the airline job as long as I could, it was my health benefit, and I get to fly. I'm like, you can't take the free flights away from me. Because if when I started making money, even if flights were still putting money in my pocket, because I fly for free and just pocket the travel money. Mm. You know, so I did that for like, all the way in 96 to 2001. That's smart, though. And you were still running, you were still doing Comic View up uh, uh, this Oh, yeah, time, I was doing right? Comic View every That's every how year. I found you in the early 2000s was yeah, yeah. from Comic View, because yeah, I remember yeah. I used to watch BET a lot back in the day. Uh, so one thing I used to do, I would, I remember my days off were Tuesday and Wednesday. So we used to do like, you know, at least three weekends, at least two or three weeks out the month. Mm -hmm. um, when I get off work Monday, I'll catch a flight to L.A. Because L.A. had like the two popping urban nights. Those nights were Monday nights and Tuesday nights. So Ur Monday night was a room at the Improv, the uh, Hollywood Improv, hosted by D. Ray Davis. And every every black person that was somebody in comedy stopped there that night just to go on. Oh, and wow. then Tuesday night was um, Fat Tuesday. It was hosted by Guy Torrey back then, who was Joe Torrey's brother. Guy Torrey was the host. And then everybody went there as well. So I just happened to be at this Tuesday night, one particular night in 99. And why is Ice Cube popped up that night? Ice Cube came that night to see Mike Epps perform for the first time. Wow. To get him in um, next Friday. Because he heard about Mike. He said, okay, let me see this kid if he's good enough to start next Friday. And there's a night Ice Cube saw Mike perform. And I happened to perform that same night. So I remember the girl, the girl that booked the show hit me up like, hey, they're doing this production called Next Friday. I didn't even know it was a sequel to a Friday movie. I, I, I just heard it's a production Next Friday and they went to audition for this movie. Yeah. And I took the script and I still, I didn't have a clue what Next Friday was. I didn't think it was a sequel to Friday at all until I went to the audition, you know. And even getting to audition was another task. So I remember I got this script and I remember I supposed to came and audition for the uh, movie, I think a week later. Mm -hmm. So I remember I went back home, came back to Philly, uh, at that particular time, um, I remember like a, a few days, a few days before my audition, I remember taking a trip, me, Kevin, because Kevin was from Philly as well. Yep. Kevin was like, he was like just starting out. He was like, right, Kevin was probably about uh, three years below me. So it was me, Kevin Hart, a local f comedian in Philly called Buck, and another guy named Toure. Those are all local guys. I remember us driving to New York to do a show. Mm -hmm. But we got into the car that belonged to the scamminess comedian in Philly. His name is Buck. So we got in this guy's car and get to find out. We're on the highway. State trooper pulls over. Find out this guy, there's a problem with the title or whatever. They thought the car was stolen. Damn. So we all get locked up that night. <laughs> what? All of you? Yeah, all of us. <gasps> Me, Kev. That was a whole, the whole long story with that. <laughs> we all Whoa. get locked up that night. That must have been a funny car ride, though. Oh, my God. It was funny. I'm not, I'm not even going to get into the car. In the back. A, you punk bastard. A, you punk bitch. You got me to the shit. <laughs> Fuck you. I'm, I'm sitting there. Cops came. They said, who car? I said, this nigga. This car. nigga. Because he had me driving at that time. He's tired. He said, Mike, I'm tired. Can you drive? So I'm the driver. They, they pulled us out in guns, like because they thought it was a stolen car, but it was a license plate that belonged to another car. It's a long story. <laughs> but they pulled us out. They said, who car? The nigga Buck. What's his real name? Buck Watt. I don't know this nigga's <laughs> name. So Bunch of spent, niggas in one car. <laughs> Bunch of we all in it. We, four of us in the prison for like overnight. Damn. We go home. And the crazy thing about it, the day I had to go to court was the day I had to come to do my audition. I had to, it was the same oh. day I had to go to L.A. To do, so my court was at 9 a.m. in Newark, New Jersey. I remember me and um, me and Kev, the only niggas that show up to court, we're like, we don't want this shit on our record. <laughs> I remember Kev running a car. We drove from Philly to Newark because it happened almost in New York. It happened right by Newark, by exit 13 on 95. Mm. 13, around there, right before yep. the Holland Tunnel. Yep. So I remember we uh, we went to court that morning, 9 a.m. court. And mind you, I'm like, I'm booked on a, a, a 1.50 p.m. flight Damn. that day. So I'm like, I got this shit about to work. I got to go to court and make it back to Philly to catch this 2 o'clock flight because I have an audition at 5 p.m. in L.A. And we made it happen. I remember we went, went to court. Got the thrown out because we had nothing to do with anything. Yep. He drove me back. I hopped in my plane, made it in time to audition for this movie. And I just... Was Ice Cube like the casting? One nah, of the casting Ice was or? not actually... He wasn't there. It was a casting director who is Steve Carr. Mm. Steve Carr started out a music video. He was a music video director. And okay. he, um, and uh, Steve Carr and then the casting agent, um, Harden. Is it Kim Harden? That's her name, Kim Harden. So she was a casting director for that. And I remember when going up there, just just taking that whole audition to the you, next level. And the movie came out and I became a star. <laughs> Did you ever see Kevin be like, 
Hey, bro, remember that night we got... Oh, no, we in. talked about it. If you just look, it's all on YouTube. Kev had an interview on Facebook, and he talked about the whole thing. And everybody, the thing about that, when we all got locked up, everybody made everybody sound like the bitch. Like, you know, everybody thought I was, said I was a bitch. If you talk to me, I'm like, I, I thought Kev was a bitch. You know, if you talk to Buck, Buck, I'm like, Teray was a bitch. Everybody blamed everybody uh. for being a bitch that night when they pulled us out <laughs> of guns. You know, so you just... Nobody has... No, everybody lie. Everybody make themselves look like the hero. <laughs> Mm -hmm. You know, but most of the people, it was pointed to me like of all of them, I think I was the most bitches nigga of all. <laughs> but it was, it was well, a night to remember. Though. I was driving, but it wasn't my fucking car. <laughs> but this nigga knew why he made me drive the car because he knew she <laughs> he knew it together. It, was, it wasn't legit. Yes. When nigga, yeah. When nigga offer you his car to drive, <laughs> niggas just say no. Don't do it. <laughs> no, don't it, trust him. Don't trust this You never fucking. know. Oh, man. Uh, Can, that's super chats real quick. All right. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, so we got uh, Google, Google Play. Play. Shout out to Fresh Fit and the Midnight Moon motherfucker. Toronto in the house. Shout out to the six. To the six, that's man. Right. And then we got uh, Project Boy... Boy... ENT LLC. LLC, yeah. I'm a pro... Uh, a 46-year-old RP Spartan, and you guys are like Leonidas. This manosphere, manosphere has rejuvenated me and have passed the Fresh Fit RP to my 55-year-old bro. You are making men great again. Thank you so Shout much, you, bro. bro. We tried to diversify over here, man. We yep. help you out with, every, with everything. Fresh, you got this one? Vibe with Terry Axe, 20 bucks. Here's 20 cents Mike Black talking-ish and bat looking like an off-TV. <laughs> <laughs> God, I wish I could see this nigga's picture. Man. Oink for me. You guys' picture is a bucks. fucking NFT picture. Fuck you, punk bitch. Put your real picture up. I'm Yo, like yes. He sir. says, "Sup, Michael Blackson? Are you gonna check out the new Drake album that drops tonight?" Actually, we were in the car we were talking yeah, about it. That uh, Drake. I might have got the album early. <clears throat> Anyhow, oh, shit. Uh, okay, uh, haunted, haunted bucks, bucks, twenty dollars super sticker. Thank, Thank you so you. much. And uh, cool. Yeah, we're good. Um, so what celebrity have you met that's like shocked you, like threw you off completely? Oh, uh, Eddie Murphy. Being in LA. Eddie, Eddie Murphy. Murphy. Yeah, Eddie, Eddie, Eddie was a fan. You know, the fun thing about it, I ran into Eddie way before we were coming to America. I remember I ran into him in, um, at the comedy store in LA. He was hanging out that night. I think Chris Tucker was performing. He stopped what year to was see this? Chris Tucker. This is uh, every bit of, um, it was around the time, I went 2008, around that time. Okay. Mm. Around 2008, and I remember, you know, I went to go speak to him. Oh, you say, yeah, I know, I know you. You, you, you the African dude, you mother sucker. <laughs> no, shit, it felt good that the guy knew who I was. Yeah, right. And then when they, when they wrote the movie, and you know, my little part in coming to America too, you know, when I was on set talking to him, he said, when him and Arsenio Hall read that scene, they said, that's Michael Blackson. Mm -hmm. He said, they already had me in mind for that part. You know, so it was a good feeling when when the. I mean, I thought he, to me, he's my favorite comedian of all time. He's my goat, and, and for him to know who I am and recognize who I am it was a great feeling. You think mm. that would be a good fit in the next coming to America? Who? Me. Where are you going to play? Uh, everybody's shadow, motherfucker. <laughs> 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 We're not hiring, motherfucker. We're not hiring no more comedians. We're not hiring no more fucking comedic actors, okay? That uh, hurt, man. That hurt. Uh -huh. you play, you, you can, you can, I'll you, tell you guys this. You he can play my shadow, me. motherfucker. Okay? Follow me around, motherfucker. Fresh is darker than Michael Blackson, bro. I didn't think it was possible. Wait, but I am? Yeah, bro. I'm looking I'm right now. I'm jealous of that. I don't hate that. I want to be the darkest. It's like, you know, when I came, kids clown me so much, try to make me feel insecure about like now. I think black is in and it's beautiful. Bro. We always been beautiful. I will say Yo, this, though. I'm Your very feet jealous. Are than I his. got more lights on me. That's why. He definitely lighter than me. <laughs> I, I go not. light, though. His feet are ashier than yours. The but you are black. Now, my feet, my toes fucked up, dog. <laughs> nah, nah. But, but you know what I fucked like. my feet up from, for about, from 2000, from like 98 <laughs> to like 2008, for 10 years, I went on stage barefooted. <laughs> What? And I think between fungus yeah, and all these fucked up the stages. Seekers, the, the, the yeah, yeah. I, had, I had, because my closing joke back then was like. Wait, we got to see whose who feet's worse. Nah, please don't look at Yeah, it. let's see it. Oh, oh shit. Lord. God oh, damn, shit. God. <laughs> God. Holy yo, fuck. What's worse? Yo, yo, what's worse? Yo, it's Mine so my, oh, shit. Yo, That's it, just horrible. Yo, yo, it's oh, the same feet, man. Feet Bro, I swear to God. Yo, <laughs> yo, what the fuck, Mike? The battle of the ashy feet. Yo, this is not good, bro. Yo, yo it's, like the video right now. Yo, it's the same sort of joke. Like the fucking video right now, bro. Yo, for 10 that? years, for 10 years, I want to stay barefooted. Because my closing joke was, uh, you know, I said, fuck, a, fuck Adidas. This is the new skin shoes. <laughs> this is the low top. And this is, look at the hot top right here. This is the hot top right here. Yo! Oh, it's, it's a Nike right here. Look at Nike. Oh, shit. Yo. Look at Nike. Yo, but see, my, yo, ash, my ash goes up to here, though. See? 
So it's like curved. <laughs> Your stops right there. So oh. American floors <laughs> fucked my foot up. I was my feet was very nice and cute. Yo, my, my, yo, my, I ain't gonna lie, bro. Yo. He came in. We're like, hey man, uh, we have a no shoes rule here. And he was just <laughs> like, he's like, what? <laughs> 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 yeah, <laughs> no shoes socks, off. nothing. It's fucking yeah. hitting ass nigga. I ain't gonna lie. My mom is gonna kill me though. My mom told me stop doing this shit, bro. Hey, yo. Baby powder on these guys' feet, bro. <laughs> Ashiness is real. They'll oh, say 100 bucks. Don't forget about Chocolate Sundays. Respect, brother. Okay, oh, thank yeah. you so much. Oh, 20 yeah. bucks, Haunted Bucks. Michael Black's now here looking like the Brooklyn Nets jersey. Where you find Are these my haters from? They're following me. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, Keyshawn, yo, Michael, mad respect oh. and love. How you own your gap with confidence? As someone with a genetic teeth gap myself, you ever think about getting it fixed? How do you manage to pull girls with it? Ooh. Well, you know what? I, I put my I put clitoris between these gaps. <laughs> <laughs> Where I'm from is a sign of beauty, man. I can't. I, I mean, trust me. Plenty of time I said, me, I close in. My my woman like, don't you dare close that gap. I need that for my clitoris, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll say this: with the fame and and the money, obviously things have ch are changing a little bit, and you yeah. know the women come. So you believe in polygamous relationships like us as well. So what's your what's your take on on polygamy and relationships and and everything? I mean, I don't. I'm not. I don't believe in polygamy. Oh, I you just, don't believe I, in I, it? No, oh, okay. no. I just I believe. I mean, don't get it wrong. I could handle three wives if 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 I could. Okay. If yeah. I could find three, but but I mean, I I rather just love one woman and just. You know, occasionally just satisfy my needs once in a while. You know, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Men, we want something different once in a while. Yeah, 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 yeah we know, do. But we I just, do. I'm a, I'm a one husband, wife type of person. But smashing girls on the side, occasionally. But you know what? But you know what? I, <laughs> right, you know right what now. I respect is that he knows he doesn't want to lie. Yeah, he's, I don't sure, he's honest about it. Like that mm -hmm. to me takes a lot of balls. Yeah. Are your balls black? Line days are over. You know, and the thing, yeah, line, that's like you know, at the end of the day. I mean, that's one of the biggest thing that ends relationship is, you know, infidelity. infidelity yeah. Right. So yeah. just be upfront and be honest about, you know, what to your lady and then see. Like, <coughs> see what you guys will come up with. Yeah, we we uh, we say on the podcast all the time that like if you're gonna exercise options and have side chicks, you should let your girl know. Yeah, yeah let her know. Let her, and, and, let her make that choice. Yeah. I'm and if saying. you're if you're a high value guy, you're gonna have offers all the time, but you don't take all of them, but you know, every now and then, yeah. eh, you know, things happen. Yeah. So uh, you gotta wait. negotiate that early in, in the relationship. You can't just be ten years in. Hey, can I have a side bitch? <laughs> no, <laughs> you gotta do that first fucking week. That <laughs> first week. <laughs> hey, by the way, there's gonna be other ladies. So <laughs> I gotta know, bro. How did you uh, pick and choose Rada? Because I met her, man. She used mm -hmm. to be an awesome woman. But how did you know she was the mm -hmm. one? Like, you know, when I met her, I was just I was, I just became single for about a year and a half or so. You know, I just got out of a four year relationship. Peace of mind. The last thing I wanted was a relationship. I didn't want no more. I was living my best life. You know, me and my dick was on tour, <laughs> <laughs> uh, sponsored by you know Magnum. <laughs> <laughs> Did you have a couple of range girls over back in, in Africa as well for you? Right? Not in range. No. Man, I, I mean, when I went there, it's, you know, when you're popping, man, pussy's not really hard to get. Yeah, exactly. But mm -hmm. at the end of the day, you know, to be great, you need that great woman by your side. That could, you, to be, you need to be focused. You need that right person you could trust, you know. Um, but, you know, when I met her, you know, I told her, I said, I don't, I'm, I'm staying right up, you know, we could kick it. And we was having fun. And she was, you know, she was okay with that because she just got out of, just got out of, a, you know, a divorce and everything else too. Mm -hmm. And, um, I mean, we st as we started to fall in love, you know, and bitch, side, all my side bitches started, well, she kind of like kicking bitches out of the way. Little by little. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not gonna, they didn't win her way. She like, she started getting rid of them one by one, you know. But I told her from the beginning, his, I said, my biggest problem is my infidelity. So, you know, if this thing's going to work, we got to find a way to, to like, you know, I don't want to lie to you. If I tell you I'm not going to ever sleep with another one, I'll be lying. So, you know, and we worked, worked up, worked out a deal. So, and by the way, she's, but she's a great woman. I mean, overall, you know, she is honest, beautiful, grown, um, caring trustworthy all that's so important she don't want nothing she never went up nothing she she will fly she lived in another state she'll fly to me and take care of me you know i didn't just give her some dick <laughs> she's dick and and uh, you know and and it's i mean i ne it's like i never you know just i never had this kind of feeling in a very very long time if ever at all you know what it is loyalty 
Yeah. And you could feel that. Yeah, and it's, it's it. genuine, yeah. it's not fake, and that's hard to find, man. Hard to fix. She don't want nothing. She said, Mate, when we get married, I'm ready to sign a prenup. I don't want nothing from you. I just want your love. You know? And shout to Ryder. Oh, She's shit. here in the studio right now, man. Hey, she is. Oh, shit. Like, Ryder, beautiful. Like, you Wipe the D. <laughs> Why you didn't tell me she was hit, motherfucker? <laughs> you got me talking crazy. <laughs> so, I got to ask you a question. How do you deal with Mike? How do I deal with him? She gonna, is she going to join in? No, no, just real quick. Okay, real quick. How do you deal with Mike? How how does he deal with me? That's the question. <laughs> yeah, she's, I mean, uh, we're we're kind of the same people. Yeah, we are. Honestly, and we just laugh and we have fun. So much and that's fun. all that matters. Yes. I'm like a river. I just go with the flow of the re- direction of it. That's fire. Put him on blast. Tell us one uh, annoying habit he has that no one knows about. One annoying oh, habit. Oh yeah, you yeah. tell him. I don't care. I'll tell him yours too. Don't go ahead. <laughs> oh, yeah. Tell him, babe. I know you want to tell him. He has amnesia sometimes. Amnesia. He okay, I take amnesia. <laughs> he I think was, and I, chooses what he wants to be honest about. Oh, okay. I think she's going to talk about my farting, but I, 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 <laughs> that I, I got, has yeah, one I'm, of the most stinkiest farts. Yeah, my fart. <laughs> Worse than mine? Yeah, dog. My fart with Claire this one. My, oh, my God. Y'all nigga, y'all going to be on. Bro, go, they call me Moses. I part the Red Sea. Uh, nigga, uh, I, no, I part the continents, sea. motherfucker. <laughs> he parts the Red Sea. He likes part, parting the Red Sea. Oh, man. He, even if he admits it or not, he does like parting the Red Sea, if you know what I mean. And oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, stop. Okay. Oh, Lord, thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Ryder. Awesome. She's awesome. I do or I don't like parting the Red Sea? No, you do. No, the fuck I don't. <laughs> That's our biggest argument. <laughs> Nasty motherfucker. <laughs> Oh man! Oh man! That's one of the most funny interviews <laughs> okay. ever, man. Yeah, yeah, Gotta be. Right, go ahead, French. Okay, <clears throat> so Michael, tell mm-hmm. us your current views on the dating market. Because obviously you're not in it anymore. Mm-hmm. But back then, maybe you could tell us, like, okay, is it worth dating now? Is it worth getting married? Like, what do you think is happening right now in the current dating market? Um, uh, you know, it's it's social media has made it so so just horrible. Just make it so easy to like fuck everybody <laughs> you know it's everybody's so easy to get to mm-hmm. you know you could you could just meet a woman look at her face and then three hours later she's in your dm like, how did this bitch find me <laughs> you know it is so and vice versa it's so yeah. easy to find people um you know so you i think just think you just gotta be honest because about what you're about be right. honest from the door women just want honesty that's what i learned i learned that so late like prior to her i lied and cheated on every mile i was ever with i was never faithful Thank i don't you. think i've I think when my mother was breastfeeding me, I think I sucked another person's titties. That's how much unfaithful <laughs> I've been my whole life. Yo. I think I sucked my neighbor's titty as a baby. <laughs> you know, so, but yeah, but just... Um, be honest. If it, yeah, because, and you know, you meet a beautiful woman and you're like, damn, I want her to be mine. But you know, deep inside too, you want to fuck a bunch of bitches. Right. You know, so just be honest from the door. Honesty is important. So who, who do you think uh, has fucked Facts. up the modern dating? Uh, is it more women or more men? It's messed it up. Uh, I mean, I think, you know, man, we are the big fuck-ups at the end of the day. Okay. We are the big fuck I mean, women are smarter about their fuck-up. You know, it's harder to find. They hide that shit. You know, they are better <laughs> at it. We are just more clumsier. We are stupider. We're dumber, you know. So, I think, man, we are the fuck-up. And we just, like I said, just be honest from the door. And you never know where your woman would be willing to accept. Because yeah, I think with social media now, uh, regular girls can hit up celebrities, you know what I'm saying? Like Facts. from oh, Idaho, yeah. Texas, and fly out. Like, it's just so many things going on. Like, you never oh, know. It was like that, but like, you know, prior to me, like, getting with her, like, I'd be going to a city. I'm, I put up a flyer. I'm in Cincinnati. The baddest bitch in Cincinnati hit me up. Hey, I see you coming to my city. Next thing you know, she's sucking my dick. <laughs> <laughs> and that's somebody's wife, probably. You never yeah, know. Exactly. I hope not. I don't do married women. God. I'm, that's one thing I never did. Okay. I just thought, you know, marriage is very sacred. And mm-hmm. when people get married, they put a guy in their life. I don't want to be responsible for that. So yeah, um, yeah, I mean, I, I've, turned, out, I've turned out a couple of married women. And it, yeah. it's been those, you know, I've done like some military base. And military wives are the biggest hoes <laughs> on earth. We, we sit on the show all the time. Bro, we sit on show all the time. Military women. If you're going to the, the military, man. Hoes. Because they know their men travel and they know their men are doing their thing. So they try to get even. But I don't fuck with married. You told me you're married, my dick goes to sleep, motherfucker. Night <laughs> night. <laughs> yeah, no, we, we say on podcasts all the time, like, you know, if you could avoid it, like, don't fuck with married women, bro. Yeah, like, yeah. it's not worth it. Like, because you're going to deal with a bunch of, you know, BS a lot of the time with it. So. And then you got to do, you know, you got to, you, especially, you know, you fucking up what God put together. So that's one person I don't mess with. <laughs> men upstairs. I don't give a fuck by everybody else. But that guy upstairs, I respect him and I fear him. And that's facts, though. Super chats, real quick. Uh, yeah. yeah sure. Um. So, um, we got um Marlon yeah, Brown here. You've asked the girls many times on the show, "What do you bring to the table?" And I've never heard any of them say trust. Big up from Jamaica. Okay. That's Thank true. you, man. Shout out to Jamaica. 
Um, and second. thank you guys for all the donations, by the way. Bro, we man. appreciate it. <clears throat> this is going to fund uh, putting cream on Michael Blackson's feet. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for the support, my brother. <laughs> uh, 20 bucks from Philly Ivy. Uh, Blackson, you are the uh, the legend. Congrats on thank your success. You. FNF, I finally hired a trainer and looking to lose those pounds. Been making 200K for the past three years. But being fit makes you all around uh, 100%. Absolutely, bro. True. You can't be fat in 2021. It's unacceptable. That is true. Uh, and then uh, 100 bucks from uh, JL Saint, I think it is. Oh, we read yeah. that one. Yeah, yeah. DL Saint. Uh, oh, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then we have, uh, let's see. Uh, no. Yeah, that one. Perfect. Uh, Michael, uh, Michael, tell FNF about Ghana Light Nightlife. Uh, that's 20 bucks from Real Humble Real. $20, all, uh, well, 20 uh, euro. Ghana is lit, man. Shout out to Ghana. Oh, God. Such a great time we have in Ghana. Big Mo 89, 20 bucks. Uh, the. <laughs> Tobro, oh, we need you here ASAP, okay. And then fifty bucks, JG France, Francois. This interview is really legendary for '90s babies. Uh, hella nostalgic. I really like this lane. FNF, y'all are good interviewers. Hashtag Michael Blackson. Hey, Shout we try, him. man. Uh, and then RIP Patrice O'Neill. He idolized. He is idolized in the spaces. I wonder if you have any stories you would like to share. And that's from our boy MK47. Twenty hours. Did you, you know Patrice? Patrice O'Neill. Nah, you know, I mean, I, I, I came across each other, but it was nobody I really talked to and right. never got to know. Okay. Fortunately, no, but rest in peace. And R.I.P. Great comic. <clears throat> Shout out to him. Yeah, very, very funny. Uh, especially John. in the manosphere. Uh, John Hill, twenty bucks, super sticker. Thank you so much. And then we got uh, twenty bucks, Marlon Br uh, Brown. Uh, you've asked the girl. Yeah. No, nope, read that one. Thank and you so much, Marlon. Ninja Watcher three seven two. <laughs> I'm thirty years old. I was living in my mother's basement. Had a dead end job and dating a four. How the fuck you find twenty dollars to send to us, motherfucker? <laughs> <laughs> you probably, is that your your allowance, my nigga? <laughs> he says. <laughs> started <laughs> watching y'all in February. Since then, I've doubled my income, making 80K. Woo! Currently living in a three-bedroom house. My new girl's at eight. Hey, wow. hey, what's up, bro? What's up, hey, man? Watcher. Fresh and fit, brother. Shout out, shout I out. I almost that, shitted on you, my nigga. <laughs> <laughs> you changed it around. Yes. Yeah. And then, um, Last, oh, Jabrizi Magic. Hey, shout out to Jabrizi Magic. Uh, who's the guest? I can't see them. <laughs> oh, fuck. oh, shit. <laughs> you know Jabrizi? He's a magician. Like, yeah, in, uh, he's like the sixth member of the Five Heart Beats. I see that nigga. Is that his picture or that Chris Brown yeah, that, picture? That's, yeah, that's, him, that's, him, yeah. that's him. That's him. Is that his picture? Yeah, that's him. Roast him. Roast him. You want to roast him? He's a magician in um, uh, Vegas. You tell me to disappear by a scream when I put it. <laughs> <laughs> breezy, what's up, brother? <laughs> and then DL saying, real talk, I spent three years at Fort Bragg. The women were about it. Yeah, facts, bro. Uh, little chicks over there. Man. She belongs to the streets. You know what time it is. Nurse. If she's a nurse, if she's a military guy, run, bro. And Nothing flight else. attendants, too. Oh, oh, flight. There you go. Oh, yeah. Very dangerous. For so, the streets. So, uh... You know, but nurse, up. I guess a lot of nurses are, are sluts too because they figure, hey, if I catch a chlamydia, I could just take a shot myself. <laughs> take my own pills, motherfucker. <laughs> Yo, real talk, I ain't gonna lie. There's a couple of nurses I used to deal with. They, they would have plan B on, uh, they just get it. They had it. So oh, easy yeah, access. Yeah, they have it. So they're like, I don't care. I'm good. You know what I'm saying? So that's that's actually sadly true. Uh, not You guys, you should always wear a condom though. Okay, don't be stupid like us. And then uh, yeah. TSK907. <laughs> 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 yeah. Get the likes up and support these two gents. Oh, we <laughs> <three, laughs> to see you there, Morasaka. <laughs> oh, Keith Murphy, 50 bucks. Shout out to you, Keith. How to turn my brightness on. My TV to 100. Keith Murphy, Sheesh. the rapper. Is that Keith, Keith Murphy? Uh, no, no, no. no, no. no. All love. Cool. Shout out to Fresh and Fit. Wait, your brightness is on, on 100, nigga? Damn. You can't see us for real? Screw you, bro. So did you ever expect to be in movies, uh, you know, when you're rising through the ranks as a comedian? Like, did you always think like, okay, I'm just going to do the comedian lane? Or were you like, no, I'm, I'm going to become an actor? Well, back in the 90s when I started, you know, every stand-up comic that was great ended up with a TV show or ended up in a movie. Mm -hmm. So we knew there was a reward somewhere at the end for us. So that's, you know, we work hard to like get to that. Even though my passion is stand-up, it's why I make the most money. You know, but all movies on TV does is make you make your price go up. Right. You know? Yeah. Because so, yeah. I, I I see like King Bach, right? Mm -hmm. He started doing like uh, videos through Vine, right, right. through I'm uh, Instagram, mm -hmm. and he, he made it to movies. But it's a different lane compared to you guys back in the day. Yeah. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. But you know, but you know, stand up is my passion, man. That's mm -hmm. that's 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 how I became rich. From and you didn't and you didn't have social media. That's well, a big have, thing. Well, yes. Yeah, you were coming it, up in the late nineties, uh, early two thousands. No one and even had cell phones yeah, like that. You, you had to, you had to be on TV. To be known, to make money, you had to be on TV. Mm -hmm. You know, now Facts. you know. Luckily, social media came out. It became like your own TV show, yes. your own right. TV network. You just had to entertain them, and it's just gonna grow. You know, you get the bigger your following is, the more you're worth now. And there's people that like are celebrities that really haven't been on TV. They're just YouTubers or whatever it is, and some some making guys, money. Yeah. So, um, <clears throat> what's one piece of advice you would give to someone that wants to be a comedian? In today's day and age, yeah. in the digital market. Uh, originality, man. Just, you know, cause the thing about it, they watch so many other comedians that try to be like this person. Don't try to be like nobody. 
be like you. Can't nobody duplicate what you went through your personal life. You know, talk about your own personal experience. Mm. Just be original. That's the most important thing. Because you try to be like somebody, you know, you're not going to make it nowhere. Be yourself. Okay. Originality. And I will say this. Um, and put God first. Always don't forget. Put God first and let him lead you away. And don't give up. You keep going. Don't give up. You know, if it's meant to be, it will happen. You know, everything is not meant, every, everything is not meant for everybody. We all... There's some great comics that are funny, but they're just not going to be stars. Maybe they're just meant to be writers for a TV show or for a write mm. for another comic or whatever. You know, so just keep going to you, and that right passion will come eventually. Fire. Yeah. And for you, I'll say this too, because uh, I'm 31, right? Uh, not as old as you. But, uh, <laughs> but, <Damn>. uh, <laughs> but, uh, but coming up though, I remember watching, you know, BET as, mm. as a kid. And I remember uh, with you, the unique thing was there wasn't a comedian that came out on like a dashiki barefoot mm -hmm, yeah. on, on stage right. and would use that, you know, speaking with Af African accent. And that's the good thing. That, about, that was very unique. Yeah, that's a good thing about coming from, Af you know, that's why I love coming from Africa, being from Africa, because it made me different. One thing about yeah. America, America likes something that's different. Yeah. They like somebody, they, they, you know, they don't like people all being the same. And I stood out. I was different. It was very know, different. If you know my name, you knew the African nigga. So that was enough for me. Now everybody, I'm a household name now. Yeah. But I think being different is what got me where I am today. What was the BET show, man? That they would that they would bring on different. Well, no, 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 no. On BET, it was uh, well, oh. now came way later. Oh my mm -hmm. bad. It, there's Comic View, but there was something else too, man. On BET, where they would bring uh, comedians on and they'd like go back and forth. Bruce, Wait. Bruce used to host it. Fat dude, Bruce, Bruce used to host it. I know someone in the chat's probably gonna get it. Oh, it was like a competition for comedians. It's um, coming to the stage. I remember that. Is, that's how Kevin Hart got started, right? Kevin was on that. I remember he 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 competed yeah. in some kind of thing. That's how I found out about him in the early two thousands as well. But there was something. It was coming to the stage. I think Bruce Bruce Jose was coming. Uh, Def Comedy Jam. Well, we had Def Comedy Jam, and we had this other show <laughs> called HBO Snaps. That was like a. It was me, and Monique on that talent. Tracy Morgan was on that. It was more like a. Kind of like what Wild and I is like. Comics roasting each other. It was like two or three episodes of that show. But the thing with Bruce Bruce, I think it might be coming to the stage. It would, oh, it would just come with you. It was show, man. I, it was late at night. It would come on at 10 p.m. It was Comic Eric, View. It was, yeah. was, it, was it a comic? Comic yeah, View. Yeah, because Kevin, okay, then, Kevin then, yeah. hosted okay. one season as well. Oh, that's Bruce Bruce okay. hosted one time. Kevin hosted, you know, the very later, like, in you know, the 2007-ish, 8-ish. Okay. Kevin hosted it. So it was Comic View. Yeah. Okay. 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 That's what, okay. Um, speaking of Wild and Out, actually. Mm. Uh, hold on. Uh, speaking of Wild and Out, tell us about that man with, with Nick Cannon and all that. How, how was that? What was that like? Oh man, that, that <laughs> you know, shout out to Nick for finding something so genius. I mean, kid is such a brilliant kid. But the funny thing about Wild and Out, I remember when I had just I moved to LA twice. The first time I moved to LA it was just like after the, my bus was kind of died. Like I, you know, I was in the movie next Friday. It came out in two thousand. From 2000 to like all the way 2004, I mean, I was milking that next Friday. I was traveling the whole country, right. picking mm -hmm. up little money here and there because I was still hot. Yep. And then when my buzz went down, which is like 2005, I said, okay, let me come back to L.A., see what's going on. And I remember coming to L.A., but by then, like I said, my buzz was done. Nobody was really trying to fuck with me at that moment. Mm -hmm. I really remember at that time, it, 2006, around that time is when Nick was auditioning for the while now for the first time. Mm -hmm. I remember going to the audition. I sucked, you know. Had the oh six. I, I think Gigolo was had had done pretty well as well. I'm gonna look that up. He had a song with R. Kelly called Gigolo as well. Okay, it was around that time, and that okay. it was right around that time. I'm gonna look. I up. suck. I didn't even make the audition, and I'm already show coming out. And then, you know, 2010, 11 is when <laughs> social media came out, and that's that's when I that's when I, I kind of like rose up again. Because mm. I remember that like 2006 or seven, I went back. To, I went back east. Went back to Philly. You know, I said, okay, let me go to back to the drawing board and right. figure out what I need to do. 2003 is when Gigolo came out. So. Okay. Yeah, because I remember he was, on, he was like, doing music as well back then. Mm -hmm. So, But the Wild, I think, like I said, it was, like, 04, 05 was when he auditioned for Wild Enough for the first time. And, I got, you know, I, like I said, I sucked. I, I wasn't good enough. And then I I went, made a name for myself. And then once I, when I became hot online, mm -hmm. now I don't have to audition no more. Now they call me to come and be a guest on the show. And then I'm busting them upside the head for the money. That's what you get when I put me on the first time. <laughs> Yo, now you got they pay me seven times what they were paying the their regular comics. Cause I find out as I'm coming, what them niggas paying y'all? Yeah. I'm like, what? That's how they pay y'all. I'm like, what, motherfucker? They pay me seven times that. It's funny because <laughs> for one episode, the, the chemistry between you and DC Young Fly was so funny. Mm -hmm. Like he would do all those uh, African accents. It was just funny between two y'all on on the show. 
DC Young Fly. Yeah, you know the funny thing about it, I, when DC first came out on the internet, I didn't know who the, I had no clue who this kid was. He wasn't a comic, like comics were no comics. Yeah. So I remember one time, um, good friends of this, um, you know, football player. I don't hear him play anymore. Good friend of mine, Philly Brown is his name. Have you heard Philly Brown? Well, he played. He got he came from Ohio State, went to drafted by the Panthers. Well, undrafted free agent. He ended up signing with the Panthers. And they went to the Super Bowl with Cam Newton against mm. Denver Broncos. And they loved the, loved the Broncos in um, whatever year that was. But Philly Brown is a good friend of mine because he went to Ohio State. And that's where my nephew went. My nephew plays in the NFL right now, Eli Apple. Shout out to Eli Apple. He signed a one-year deal with Cincinnati Bengals. So I'm looking forward to him having a good season there. But Philly was a good friend of mine. So Philly hit me like, yo, this dude, you, DC, just roasted you. I'm like, who the fuck is DC? So I went and looked it up. I looked at oh, this funny looking nigga. Okay. <laughs> and then I hit him back. You know what I mean? Roast him and roast his ass. He me and went back and forth. You know, and that's how we kind of like got started with like going back and forth. We went back for like five, six times. Wow. You know, I'm going to try to go back and find some old shit that we did. This is like the, you know, early when Instagram just came out. We're talking about like 2012 ish, 2013 ish. You know, so that's how we kind of like got familiar with each other. I'm curious, bro. Uh, how was the first meeting Kevin Hart, Drake, mm -hmm. and I, uh, Mike Epps? Well, like I said, Kev, Kev, me and Kev, you know, Kev came from behind us. Like, Kev looked up to us as when we started. We was the one in Philly that was, like, headlining when Kev was opening act. So me and Kev, we go way back. We okay. talking about, you know, Kev probably started out in, like, 96, and I'm, like, 94, 93. So I had, like, three mm. years ahead of him. Mm. So, you know, he was like our, he's like our little brother. You know, uh, let me see. Drake. Drake? <laughs> Met Drake. Drake for the first time. You know, and Drake, I mean, he knew who I was. You know, you know, I, I was on my IG lighting people up every day. I'm not, I'm not nigga. <laughs> you know, you already know. Because I'm going to run into him. It was in Tyson's Corner, somewhere in D.C. Mm -hmm. uh, what year was, is this? Ah, oh, God damn it. Let me see. I remember who I was dating. I, I got to think about who I was dating to figure out who it was. <laughs> remember, remember, he has amnesia, remember? Yeah, yeah, he has amnesia. Yeah. I want to say it was, well, IG was out. So it had a band. It was probably like 2012-ish. Um, okay, 2012. 2012. Okay. Yep. 11, 12-ish. Around that time is when I met Drake for the first time. Okay. You know, he was, we happened to end up in the same store in Tyson's Corner. It's like at the mall in, in D.C. D.C., Virginia, whatever, you know. And that's why I ran into him. We took a picture together, actually. Um, and that was that. And then, um, you know, and I remember we followed each other on IG. And we just, once in a while, we'd, you know, we sent each other a DM. And he was like, you know, don't roast me too hard, whatever. <laughs> and then um, then I, I ran into him more recent when he, you know, in L.A. Mm -hmm. Me and his dad became real cool. You know, shout, shout out to Pops. Dennis. Yeah, Pops, real funny dude, funny looking dude. Like, Could you do me a favor, Mike? Yes. Can you just send me that picture of you and Drake so I can post it? I, I, would, I, 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 would, I have to go back on IG and find it. But because I'll find it. They'll be like, oh, I'm with Drake. <laughs> <laughs> He's gonna put it on his Instagram. I'll find it. I'm gonna go back. I'm gonna go back and look for that picture. Okay. So uh okay, and so um and you're you're full time living in LA now at this point, right? Uh, you're probably meeting all oh, kinds of people. Oh yeah, all yeah, the time. Yeah, 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 yeah. Now I am, you know. I got a house back east and you know, yeah. um I, whenever I wanna feel like, you know, get some snow, get that cold feeling, I'll go back to my house back in the East Coast. But, so 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 Drake, uh what was it like me and Ice Cube? Oh, uh, like I said, the first time was, you know, I didn't even get to see him that night when he came to see Epps. I just knew he was there. I knew he was there. I didn't he get to there. talk to him. Okay. Uh, we talked more on um, Hip Hop Squares. We didn't even talk about that show. You guys ever remember Hip Hop Squares? No. What, what the fuck? That was this a couple of years ago. This, yes. This, 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 we've trained like, those. Train those. Shots are, we did like three seasons there. of Hip Hop Squares on um, on VH1. Mm. Uh, Ice Cube produced it. And that's, mm. that's when we really got a chance to talk. You know, uh, cause we, you know, he produced the show and we have, we, I did every season, we did three seasons and then we, it kind of like got shut down in COVID. Mm. COVID shut it off, you know, but we're going to hopefully do come back once things are back to normal. Okay. Me and Ice, we got to talk a little bit. We, we talked about, you know, we talked about a lot. He's a real, real, he's a he fan of my work, you know, and then I also, I ran into him a few times at his um, big three games. I'll go to the games, you know, he showed me love, he had me, and he's a great guy, man. Mm. Fire. Yeah. So I guess when you met him, it was a good day. Yes, motherfucker. No pun intended. <laughs> no pun intended. <laughs> uh, okay, uh, uh, Chris, where we at? Uh, yeah. Right uh, DL oh. Saint? Yeah, we missed those one. Okay, uh, ain't no grind like that stand-up grind. Fresh of it forever. Thank you guys so much, man. Thanks, guys, guys, and please do us a quick favor, man. 
like the video. I don't want to stop the show to get likes up and stuff. Just help us with the engagement. And then yep. also comment below that Fresh and Mike have ashy feet and or for the algorithm. One of those two things right, will who's, help. Who's darker? Or, or, me, or, me, me or Mike. Or, or what was the other thing you said? I'm a the level 3,000 something player. You did 3,000 pick in the 2010 <coughs> NBA draft. There you go. Or Scotty Scottie Pippen. Pippen uh, from... Poor version. <laughs> and then we got uh, Free Guapo. Uh, free, free Guapo. Uh, how important was Moses in your career? <laughs> how important was what? Moses in your career. Moses. Oh, this is my Moses and um my boy Moses? I think so. Or, or oh, are they yeah. making a joke on the Red Sea? No, no. No, no. no. Moses is a good friend of mine. Me oh, and Moses okay. go way back. I met Moses every bit of probably, I got to think about where I was living to figure out a year. But every bit of, I know him at least 15 to 18 years. I God know damn. Moses for a while. Okay. That's, Moses, how you got, because, that's how you got. Because without Moses, I would never have been yeah. in contact with Black. Yeah, oh. Moses is a great guy. Yeah. He's a Haitian. Haitian guy. Sakafet. 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 From Boston. He's a, he's just a diehard Boston fan. Patriots, Celtics. Bruins, Red Sox. Oh, that, no, I just hate that fuck. They, they, I hate teams that are so good, especially when your team sucks. You know? <laughs> I was raised in Philly. We, I mean, we struggled. Eagles fan. You know, but we won the Super Bowl. What twenty eighteen? So I went to the game. I was right there. Went to the party with them. You know, it was great feeling. You know, Meek Mo. Are you guys friends? I, yeah, yeah. Me, me, Meek fit. You know, we good. We, you know, we we had our little what? beef moment. Oh, really? But overall, you know. We good friends. We, you know, we, I respect the kid. Did you roast your feet I, or what happened? No, nah, no, nah, it's a long. I'm not even getting into that. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Shout King out to Drake. Meek. Meek's my nigga. Um, and it, it's what I like best about this kid, man. You know, he started out from the streets, grinded his way up, went through, sh you know, some shit, you know, with Drake, and bounced back. Yeah, for and real. Back, nothing like. Nothing impressed me more Huge than a nigga comeback. to make a comeback yeah. in everything. You know what I mean? Like so us, man. Out. Yeah. Facts. Comeback is strong. Facts. Yeah, come back. Uh, okay, King Dre, 50 bucks. Took a check on the first dates to see Michael Blackson at the Improv in Tampa back in 2012. Smashed the same night. <laughs> oh, there you go. Shout out right. to King Dre, King Dre, man. man. That's what I do, motherfucker. I get niggas <laughs> pussy. <laughs> Aphrodisiac. Uh, and then we got Archie Engineer, 35 bucks. I remember seeing Michael for the first time on a skit with Master Pete. Epic. It wasn't a skit. It was a fucking movie. <laughs> <laughs> It's called Repo. <laughs> oh, yeah. Repo, yeah. that's right. Um, I'm going to bring that nigga back to the and live with balls in my hands. <laughs> <laughs> Two coffees to go, please. <laughs> Bitch, you look like me. Uh, <laughs> <shit>. <laughs> Paper Chase, 50 bucks. Y'all boys are legends. Thank you so much. You. And then uh, I think we're caught up. No, right. And that's 20 bucks from Herman uh, Stribling. Uh, thanks for the advice. I'm about to close on my first property in Vegas, but getting to the real shit, uh, this is the most money I have to floating shirts, mother shirt, mother sucker. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Mike, how was it going to Ghana? And you're building a school out there, right? Building a school, man. Building a school. I had to give it back. So, you know, when I came to the States, I didn't get to go back to Africa, period, to about 15 years later is when I was able Damn. to afford to. 15 years? 15 years? Let me see. Yeah, 15 years later. Damn. Okay. It's when I was able to afford. I was. I mean, I came at 13. I went back at like 27, 28, whatever age I was. And, and um, you know, it's when I was able to. At that time, I was still working for the airlines, 2000 mm. when I went. And uh, I, I mean, I, like I said, I get a discount on my flight, yeah. you know. So I went there, and I'm, and I, and I actually went to Ghana, and I'm, I'm in Ghana. I'm out being Ghana at one point in my life, and I'm like, it's like the same things. I didn't see too much improvement. I was very sad. Like the kids, uh, you know, in the villages are like, in, in, in the helping their mothers in the marketplace. I'm like, why are these six, seven year old kids not in school? Mm -hmm. Why are they out here? You know, get to find out that every grade costs money. In, in Ghana, like, you know, uh, there might be some government schools, you know, which is like public school, but those fills up so fast because those are free, mm. you know, even though like right now, I don't think anything from first to ninth grade, nothing is free. Those kids all have to pay between first to ninth grade, Damn. like, you know, so I Damn. said to myself, a lot of these kids not in school, school because they can't afford to go. And I always, and then I remember one time I went to the school. This was back in 2000. I went to get an idea what a school, what it costs a year. And I'm like, I found out it was like 80 bucks a year. Oh, really? I'm okay. like, I went, so I'm going to the marketplace the next day and I seen like four kids and I told their mother, I'm like, you know, I don't like these kids. Can I pay for them to go to school? Like, so I paid for like four kids to go to school for like four years. Mm. Right up front. It was yeah. like nothing. A couple of, couple of racks. Yeah. You know, and I'm and then I said to myself then, I said, I gotta I gotta build a school eventually. Yeah. And I came back to the state, I thought I put this plan together, you know, to build a school from like that's equivalent to like first to ninth grade, where kids would be, it'd be a private school, it'd be a scholarship, be free for them. For free. They gotta okay. be special kids, you know, kids that really need it. I hate you know, one thing my us Africans and foreigners were always trying to scam our way through <laughs> shit. 
you know, <laughs> you'll be a fucking millionaire dad trying to put his kid in a free yeah, school. Yeah, like, yeah, no, yeah, yeah. I'm going to, I mean, mind you, it's going to be just nine classes, about 25 people per class. So every kid in school got to be real special. You got to really need this, you know. Mm -hmm. So I'm a, I mean, if I don't at least get to talk to at least 25% of these kids, like I'm going to, these kids be handpicked, make sure they really need this. So I said to myself, I got to, I got to give back. So school, it became my thing. I'm, I always thought education was the way, you know, you want to teach your kids how to avoid catching AIDS or doing this. So education all starts in school. They got to know. They got to know. So let's let's get the kids in school. That's fire. That's what's up, man. That's what's up. So so, you, I'm, so I'm, instead of buying lotion for your feet, you I'm put kids through school. school. Yeah. That's and I, nice. it, listen, I, all my followers, my fans that come out to my shows, hey, that's why I'm doing my money. Whenever you buy a ticket to my show, you are helping me build the school. So it's about 30, 40% done. And the goal is it's going to be ready hopefully by like January, February. And by September of next year, I want this shit to be running. Fire. That's what's up, man. That's what's up. That's what's up. Giving back to the community, baby. Yes, sir. Uh, Kojo Iweridu, uh, 30 bucks from Canada. Uh, Morasaka, tell everyone about real estate opportunities in Ghana. Uh, yeah, definitely. Ghana is up. Uh, man. It's, it, Ghana is going to be like the Dubai of Africa, man. Mm. So, you know, I definitely suggest advice, you know, if you're going to, you know, you ever think about going back to Africa, Ghana is a place to start. How much is the house over there roughly like? In, in there are area. different prices, man. You know what I'm saying? It's just, I mean, you get houses cheap. It's a, I mean, don't get this. Ghana is not, there's nothing really cheap. You know, if you want a decent house, you're going to spend some money. Yeah. You know, but I mean, you could get a house anywhere from 100 to fucking $2 million. From $100,000 oh, right. to $2 million. Yes. So it all depends what you could afford to get. And the, the, the unfortunate part of Africa is like, 99% of everything that's bought there mm. is owned. There ain't no, we know it's not much financing. Mm. Even though they do yeah. have it, but if they have it, a very short term and the interest rates are motherfucker. So niggas in Africa that own a house, they, they own cash. a house. Yeah, they own it. Mm. They're not leveraging yeah. with a bank or I'm not that. sure how it is in the island. Is it like they're in Barbados too as well? Uh, oh, you guys have like banks? No, like they have banks and they, they do loans, but it's normally the, the rich white people that buy most of the stuff. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but in Ghana, you know, we are buying our own stuff, so yeah. Okay. So, uh, Mike, any new upcoming shows you got going on or projects, uh, anything yeah. that you're working on that you uh, can talk about, share with us? Yes, um, you know, me and my lady doing another season of uh, Couples Retreat. It was the VH1 show. Oh, hey, shoot. Hey, that's you what's know. up. I saw some clips of it. Uh, very fun show, you know. I'm not a big reality guy but this one was like it's just so rare just more about yourself and just getting your fans to know who you are that's all so mm -hmm. we're going to do another season of that so look out for that um i'm going on tour with martin lawrence you know we was about to start a tour and then pandemic shut us down so now we're Damn, going back martin lawrence we're, legend yeah we're going back this fall october 22nd we start off and um well this the tour starts late september but i, I jumped on in september october 22nd because i had some previous things that i was booked october 22nd check me out in pittsburgh 29th it's philly 30th in new york uh and then they follow him and then i have vegas in there i got biloxi mississippi on the list i got ontario oh, california on the list. oh wow so look out for me on the martin latest fuck tour and real quick have you ever, ever met uh will smith i met will damn it you know when i met will so funny around the time i met will was when uh will was he was doing, he was about to produce a show for Nick Cannon. And I don't think it never happened. Mm. You know, I think they was trying to like bring up a new Will Smith type. And Nick Cannon was going to be that guy. I remember, I remember Will was, because I remember I went and met with Will because I'm very good friends with Charlie Mack, who is Will's right hand man. Mm. And Charlie took me to meet Will. And I was like, you know, what you got going on? He said, well, the thing we have going on right now is this new show, but it's, it's kind of like about Nick Cannon, whatever, you know. He said, but I will always, I'll keep it in your mind for some shit. But I think he probably mad at me because I know when he had through when he went through the entanglement shit. I think I roasted his ass. <laughs> shit. I lost all my friends, man. Oh, I, I man. lose a new friend every week. <laughs> yeah, you know it's uh, so funny. Tyrese, me and Tyrese are good friends, and Tyrese told me, he said, "Mike, you're a celebrity now. You got you on our side. Yeah. You can't be roasting motherfuckers." I said, well, "Nigga, I don't want to be on your side. I want to roast your nigga." <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's funny. Oh man, uh, paper chase, hundred bucks. I'm down eighteen pounds this month, Myron. Let's get to it. Made eighteen k yesterday. Shout out to Jimmy trade. Fox. Also, my nigga, Jimmy hey. Fox. Jamie Jamie mm -hmm. is ready to produce a show with me, uh, uh, a TV show with me. We're talking about it right now. So oh, shout fire. out to my nigga Jamie Fox. Can't forget him. Yeah, he's also he's, he's a very multi-talented guy, yeah. man. Shout out to him. Actor, singer, uh, do musician, the, everything, man. Stripper, everything. Man. Yeah, stri <laughs> what? Stripper? I'm just playing. Oh. <laughs> I believe anything. Django. I'm about to quit my job and buy a condo on the coast of Mombasa, Kenya. Hey, man. Do your thing, bro. Awesome. 
Paper chase. Shout out to you, brother. And then uh, Lastly, DL Saint. Uh, yo, uh, please give this to Mike for the school. I'll be down there soon. My balls are not hurting anymore. LOL. There you go. Yeah, oh, he got a. Um, Don't to me, right? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Shout out to you, DL. Uh, he, he doesn't want no more babies. Yeah, man. Boy, no. you got. So he ain't got the balls to argue with his woman. We mean. <laughs> I think he just doesn't want to have kids anymore. He cut both balls or just one ball? Oh, I don't know. Okay, I think yeah. he said he cut his balls. Yeah. <laughs> I don't like, know that much. Too much shots, but I don't want his balls anymore. Uh, so any other projects? Uh, besides, uh, uh, let me see. I wrote, I wrote, I wrote, um, I wrote, a, I wrote my own script. I wrote a movie that I'm about to get. I don't want to talk about it because I don't want to my, still my idea. But, okay. you know, I got, I got a crazy controversial movie idea in mind. Hey. Mike, where can they find you, brother? No, in the daytime, motherfucker. Look, look, <laughs> look for me before eight p.m. Okay? Oh, After eight p.m., you gonna be, you will never find me. Okay, I'm undefeated. In fact, I win all my fights at night. If anybody wanna fight me? Meet me outside eight p.m. Oh, Six p.m. I'm defeated and we fight. But um, yeah, follow me. Follow me on IG. Uh, for those who went to a public school, I spell it for you. Is M I C H A E L B L A C K S O N. That's my Instagram, my Twitter. And my Christian Mingle. <laughs> Christian Mingle. All right, I guys. Man. Uh, so, yeah, guys. Yo, guys, thank you so much for tuning in to the show. I think we're going to have an after hours yeah, here quick in a show, little bit. Uh, with the girls and Mike and then his girl as well. And then we're going to end it there. All right, guys. We'll catch you guys in a little bit. Peace. Peace. Yeah.